Welcome to Evensong at Home for the sixth Sunday of Hillary term. We began our Evensong at Home a little differently tonight with a choral introit, a setting by the Renaissance composer Orlandus Lassus of Psalm 6, verse 8. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. It's a more somber tone because today is the first Sunday of Lent. Since ancient times, Christians have kept the 40 days before Easter as a time set apart, a time when we are encouraged to make space in our lives for ultimate things and for spiritual growth. Lent is a special season of prayer and a special season to practice the universal disciplines, which are common to all world religions, self-examination, self-regulation, fasting, and almsgiving. Lent is not about punishing ourselves. It's not about morbid introspection. Rather, Lent can be a joyful time of growing in wisdom and grace. Lent is the spring cleaning time for the soul. So welcome to Evensong for the first Sunday in Lent. The lesson is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, beginning at the 28th verse. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Thanks be to God. This evening's poem is Evensong by George Herbert. When we hear the title Evensong, we might imagine, especially given Herbert's poems on the parts of the church, that he will begin by describing a service in a church. But when we come to read Herbert's poem, we see that the mood is very different. It's an intimate, private evensong of the soul at the end of the day coming before God. This painting is The Holy Family by Night, painted by Rembrandt between 1642 and 1648. Rembrandt, the master of the intimate interior, the intimate encounter. Rembrandt, the master of humanizing the biblical stories. In the painting, Mary reads while Anna, her mother, rocks the cradle gently, pulling it with a cord. Joseph is sitting in the darkness under the stairs and the shadows cast a spell. We turn to Rembrandt to help us sink more deeply into Herbert's poetry because Rembrandt's paintings, like Herbert's poems, are the fruit of deep reflection on the Bible, on the life of the soul with God, and are also beautifully observed, taking the things of everyday life and making them suffused with the divine. Blessed be the God of love, who gave me eyes and light and power this day, both to be busy and to play. But much more blessed be God above, who gave me sight alone, which to himself he did deny. For when he sees my ways, I die. But I have got his son, and he hath none. Herbert's poem begins very simply, almost like a child's cradle song, or the kind of prayer that a child would be taught to say by heart, kneeling by their bed at the end of the day. Blessed be the God of love, who gave me eyes and light and power this day, both to be busy and to play, but much more blessed be God above. But then the mood begins to become more grown up as Herbert begins to examine himself in the light and the truth of God and finds himself wanting. And he begins to express his gratitude that God, in effect, turns a blind eye to all of his wayward ways and also his gratitude to God for giving him his son and depriving himself of his son. What have I brought thee home for this, thy love? Have I discharged the debt? which this day's favour did beget. I ran, but all I brought was foam. Thy diet, care and cost do end in bubbles, balls of wind. Of wind to thee, whom I have crossed, but balls of wildfire to my troubled mind. Then the mood becomes more tempest-tossed as Herbert begins to review the day and he finds that really nothing he did today was worth anything, especially when set beside so great a gift, so great a debt that's owed to God. Herbert's state of mind will be familiar to many of us who try to lay ourselves at rest at night, but find that our minds won't stay at rest and that they just run round and round and round in circles foam, bubbles, balls of wind, balls of wildfire to my troubled mind. Yet still thou goest on, and now with darkness closest weary eyes, saying to man, it doth suffice. Henceforth repose, your work is done. Thus in thy ebony box thou dost enclose us, till the day put our amendment in our way and give new wheels to our disordered clocks. But once Herbert has gone through the, the tempest and the storm, he begins to rest in God's grace and love. 
Still thou goest on, and now with darkness closest weary eyes, saying to man, it doth suffice, henceforth repose, your work is done. And so Herbert begins to relax into the arms of the love of God, and to ask God to bring order to his disorder in the morning. I muse, which shows more love, the day or night? That is the gale, this the harbour. That is the walk, and this the arbour. Or that the garden, this the grove. My God, thou art all love. Not one poor minute scapes thy breast, but brings a favour from above. And in this love, more than in bed, I rest. Rembrandt's painting of the return of the prodigal son was painted in the last year of his life, in 1669, and it is the culmination of a lifetime. Rembrandt portrays the father of the prodigal son, like God in Herbert's poem, as being blind, and so unable to see the terrible state to which he has sunk, but longing only to embrace him in forgiveness and love. The son is dressed in rags, his head shaven in repentance, covered with dirt, but he is knowing a complete surrender and release into the love of his father. He takes refuge in the grace and forgiveness shown to him by his father, just as Herbert finds at the end of his day. My God, thou art all love. Not one poor minute scapes thy breast, but brings a favor from above. And in this love, more than in bed, I rest. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, who for our sake didst fast forty days and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence, that, our flesh being subdued to the Spirit, we may ever obey thy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness, to thy honour and glory, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our end chapel, Candlestand, has seen a lot of use during the pandemic. Many times this term, as I walked through the ant chapel on the way to somewhere else, I've noticed lit candles. Each one was lit by an individual student, staff member, or fellow. There are as many reasons to light candles as there are individuals. Some come to remember a loved one who's died, or to stand in prayer or thought for a relative in hospital, a friend who is struggling, or to ask for clarity for themselves for some difficult situation. George Herbert's Evensong talks about coming home to God at the end of the day, to rest in God's loving embrace. And so at this place in our Ant Chapel, where so many have found comfort, hope, and strength, we pray for all those coming home, for those who long to return home, and for those longing for loved ones to return. This evening, especially, we remember all those coming home this night after a long day, exhausted, maybe discouraged, that they may find rest. We remember also all those trapped far away from home by the pandemic, by natural disasters, by extreme weather, warfare, or other obstacles. We pray in solidarity with all prisoners, hostages, and captives Remembering especially those night, this night, those imprisoned in Myanmar, Iran, Hong Kong, Turkey, Russia, and all other places for which we have a special concern or relationship. We remember also all those who have gone missing, whether in mountains, towns, or villages, that they may be found. And we pray for all those who longed for loved ones to return home, who, keeping, who are keeping vigil.
As a college community, our hearts go out especially to Esther and Dan and their families. And we pray that they might find strength to carry on and faith to keep the flame of hope alight. In the final moment of silence, we can offer up our own prayers and thanksgivings. We offer these our prayers, trusting in the love of God to bring us home. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer, rest upon you and remain with you this night and forever. Amen. Amen.